Can two work together unless they agree? That's a rhetorical question that the questioners don't always wait for the answer. In some cases, they use it as a basis of a conversation. If you could see that question, can two work together and you say, unless they agree. So it may be no, they may not agree, and they may what? They may agree. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I could see that often and often God used to use this rhetorical question to talk to our forefathers, the Israelites in the olden days. To make them know the importance of his love towards them. The same thing he did to them in Malachi chapter 3, verse 7. He said, can one rob God? Then they continue to question God that, how can we rob you? Where is that your treasury that we want to go and loot? Where do you keep that your money that you go to steal? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But God told them that, you rob me of your tithes and your offerings. They say, which tithe are we to pay for you? We till our ground on our own. We cultivate our farms on our own. We plant whatever we want to plant on our own. The crops germinated and we harvest and we eat what we planted. Now tell us where have we robbed you? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lord now opens their ears. Say, look, the ground you are tilling is my ground. The crop you planted belongs to me. If I've not released the rain from heaven to fall on those crops, it will not germinate. If it doesn't germinate, how can you have first? Now, the utmost part of it, I breathe life into your life. That is why you can cultivate land. That is why you can plant crop. That is why you can now talk in of uh, harvesting. If I cease that your breathing, what else can you do? So you are a robber. Only you are not carrying gun. I will have seen you are an arm robber. <laughs> So when you wake up in the morning with your alarm, you rush and you go to office, you do this, you do that, you do that, and you take your paycheck, you now see that it's your own. And you eat everything, you are a robber. It is not yours. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. There is someone behind that activities that is making it to be what it is. And that is why that question came again to the Israelite today. Say, can two walk together unless they agree. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Why is that question? And what is the importance of that question in Christian's life? Can we quickly go back to Amos chapter 2? Okay. Mark 2, 9. Mm -hmm. them, mm -hmm. height was like the height of the cedars, uh -huh. and Yes. The the height of the Amorites was as tall as poles. They were so high, they were so taller than you. But without your gun, without anything, I went ahead of you and I destroyed them before you. Uh -huh. His fruits from above and his roots from beneath. Also, I brought you up from the land of Egypt. I brought you out from the land of Egypt. And led you 40 years through the wilderness. I led you 40 years through the wilderness. To the land of the Amorites. To the land of the Amorites. And I raised up your, of your sons. I raised up of your sons. For prophets of your young men for Nazarites. Those are the good things that the Lord is doing in the life of Israel that he's doing in our lives today. He brought out us, he brought us out from those wicked family, from those wicked tribes, from those wicked cities and country, and now set your land on this ground of America, on this ground of Chicago, of wherever, or Canada, or London. But he takes you out and he abide with you so that the enemies doesn't have part on you. <laughs> Is it not even thus, O ye children of Israel, That's said the Lord? But you gave the Odama, Odama. That's it. Go to Isaiah chapter 5, verse 1 to 5. He's asking them again, Is that not what I did for you, Israelite? Just talk to me. Celestia, Christendom, is that not what God is doing in your life? Are you on this land? Are you breathing? 
this morning now because you have that power to breathe. That is why she started want to appreciate God today because she knows it's not she's not alive today by his or her power. Uh -huh. Now will I sing to my well. Say now will I sing to my, my well beloved. Uh -huh. A song of my beloved. Sons of my beloved. Touching his vineyard. Uh -huh. My well beloved hath a vineyard. Yes. In a very fruitful hill. In a very fruitful land. And he fenced it. He fenced it. And gathered out the stones thereof. He removed all the stones from thereof. And planted it with a choicest vine. Planted with a choicest vine. And built a tower in the midst of it. And built a tower in the midst of it. And all also made a wine press therein. Made a wine press inside there. And he looked that it should bring forth grapes. And he looked that it should bring forth grace. And he brought forth wild grapes. Oluwani Ogba Jarakon. Ile Ayeni, Ile Ayeni, Ile Ayeni. Ofuru Gbisi Nore. Awaye Dinyan Araye. Ofuru Gbisi Nore. Awaye diyan araye Shuboni bati kore de o kilorika Ki unorika Ha! Ki unorika o di bagbo Ki unorika Okpo esho le ronko ti je o Okpo esho lo ti re danu Ki unorika Ni nu esho iye o Ni nu esho i bala o Shalipo ni bala wa dudu ni Hallelujah! Ah, that's the translation. Yeah, it's chapter 5, verse 1 to 5. That's just that song. Yes. And now, all inhabitants of Jerusalem. That's okay, my dear. You're good. Thank you. You've been established by his power. He did everything that can be done to the Israelites. But he expected that Israelites should understand who he is. But they fail to understand who God is. is. Hallelujah. Amen. That is why it's not asking that question. Can two work together unless they agree? You people cannot work with me because you refuse to obey me. You refuse to go my ways. My ways has never been your own ways. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. When we're talking of walking, you are saying something about movement, right? Lifting your feet from where you are and advancing forward. But when we talk of this walking with God, God is talking of fellowship. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. His own walking here is about fellowship. And when you, as a human being, as we here, before we walk with anybody, either in friendship, in business, in marriage, in anything, we look for one or two qualities in that person. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Am I talking to somebody? Yes. You want to see, okay, can myself and so 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 person go into business together? What I've been hearing about him or what I've been seeing about him or her doesn't seem that thing will be profitable. Can I go into a relationship with this person as a wife or as a husband? There are qualities you as a person, as a human being, created by God, looks into someone before you move to that person. Am I lying? Yes. No, no. <laughs> somebody say I'm lying. Okay. <laughs> to me, I know I look for something before I go with somebody. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Same thing to God, our creator. He has his laid down preferences for anyone to walk, to, to, to fellowship with him. He doesn't just walk with anybody. You cannot just start one morning and say you want to walk with God. No. If you are a liar, you cannot walk with God. A prostitute, you cannot walk with a God. An idolater, you cannot walk with a God. Hallelujah. So certain qualities you must meet before you can be able to fellowship with God. This is the thing he is asking from the Israelites. If you go to that, the same Amos chapter 2, and you see what happened in verse 6 to 8. What happened? Thus says the Lord. Thus the Lord. For three transgressions of Israel. For these three transgressions of Israel. And for four. And for four. I will not turn away the punishment thereof. I will not turn away the punishment thereof. Because they sold the, the righteous for silver. Uh huh. And the poor for a pair of shoes. And the poor for pure sheep. Uh huh. That pants after.
scattered the dust of the earth on the head of the poor. Uh -huh. And turned aside the way of the meek. And turned aside the way of me. Uh -huh. And a man and his father will go in unto the same man. And a man and his son will go into the same gate. To profane uh -huh. my holy name. <laughs> to profane my holy name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That is what the Israelites are doing. And they think they, they can walk with God. And they think they could continue to enjoy the benefits from God. And Moemos said, before God will do anything, he will first of all send message through his prophets. But the Israelites have been hearing the messages day in, day out, day in, day out. But they think because of the love of God to them, as God says in the Dathemus chapter 3, verse 2, because he loves them, so you only are the only nation that I know in the whole world. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. They shall not sit on that as whatever they do, there will not be any punishment for all their doings. God is now making it clear to them, for this that you've done, I will come unto you and I will punish you severely not even thinking of whatever I've done unto you. Hallelujah. 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 So if you want to fellowship with God, if you want to walk with God, you need to mend your ways. We have to mend our ways. That is why the God is now calling upon the Israelites to let them know where they fail, where they derail, and what they doing that is not of God. If you see in the Christian don these days, the oppressors here and there. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And they say they are preaching the gospel of God. You see some pastors, they will say their leg must not touch ground, and some idiots will carry them on their head. <laughs> the pastor will not put his leg on the ground, he will be putting the leg on the back. Hallelujah. Some will be washing his head and says they should open their mouth and the idiot will be drinking that water. Hallelujah. God says you continue to oppress the masses. One pastor last year in Nigeria said he got his uh, third jet. Yes, and he was telling the crowd that he got his third jet during the COVID-19. So if you are not talking about COVID-19, you should go to him. It's not about that, that he should continue. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And in that church, there will be people that cannot take their daily bread. They cannot even have 20 naira to have their bread in the morning. Hallelujah. They will gather money from pepper seller, granite seller, and they build a school, university of so-so-so school. And when the university is now completed, now for the children of that pepper seller to go to that school, no way. Because they'll be asking for two million per semester. And where will the Yalata get two million? How will he gather that money? And they will not say, okay, because your mother cannot afford, we are giving you a concession because you are a good student, you are brilliant, blah, 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 blah. Okay, you can go ahead. It doesn't happen. And that universities were being built by their name. Hallelujah. And this is our celestial also, where people are suffering at Imeko, where some shepherds could not afford daily bread, where they don't have members, and we can be able to carry 300 million to go and give to government. Eh, to go and give to government. Hallelujah. We are with him. God is calling on us to fellowship with him. If you walk with God, you will see that on this earth, there is nothing there that can benefit you unless you have Christ in your life. No fellowship with God. Can we go to Genesis chapter 6, verse 9? Because it is only the righteous, only person that is righteous can fellowship with God. Uh -huh. These are the generations of Noah. Yes. Noah was a just man. And perfect in his, in his generation. That's what Perfect in his generation. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You don't say because the world is corrupt, then you have to join them. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. A Christian does not say if you can't beat them, you join them. 
you must not join multitude to do evil. If you are to be single and out of that journey, it is better for you to be out of that journey. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I think that is the problem the majority of them are is having with our Father and our Lord. Because their own focus is different from his own focus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's heavily bounded. It's just everything about heaven. Everything about heaven. Like he's even fed up of this, uh, what we call uh, this, our, uh, uh, this wonderful word that we hear now. Because I used to listen to one of his prayers at times when he prayed and I shake my head. Yes, he did it last Sunday. He did it when Olumide was celebrating his 40th birthday. <laughs> eh, he said, you'll be 60, you'll be 70, you'll be coming of law, coming talents, you'll be 90, but I don't think I'll be there. <laughs> Last Sunday again, he was praying for that uh, celebrant. Yeah, your life will be long, you will be reverend, but I don't think I, I don't think we have that, but I don't think I'll be there. Wow. I just, I keep on looking at that man, and I, at times I'd be amazing. And that is why I always, at times I would love to call him on phone. When he didn't pick up, I'm not all that happy, because I know the conversation we end on spiritually, uh, we let you know. Yeah. We were talking of somebody, they said they remember us too much. Ah, is that, that just like that one year? <sighs> so it's terrible. Mm, that is it. Mm. <laughs> that is we may we pray. Let us we be good. We do yes, we will be good. But so that old age, what comes with that old age? That's the most important thing. We call it hood, hood, hood. <sighs> so, mm, the, mm. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That is what God is looking for in us. It may be difficult, it may be so hard, but that's the best way you can live your life. If you are heavenly focused and your thinking is of heaven, then you will not cheat. You will not backbite. You will not fornicate. Because anything you do, you'll be doing as you'll be you'll be feeling the feeling that maybe. As I'm doing this, somebody's looking at me. Or maybe as I'm doing it, this thing will happen. Hallelujah. You will be doing it. Let us see what Hebrew, Hebrew. Chapter 11, verse 7. This same Noah. Hebrew 11, verse 7. Uh -huh. He condemned the words of the word. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Nigeria English. You can put that to your mouth so that I can hear you a bit. Tolu. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Eh? Uh -huh. uh -huh. things not seen yet. As yet. Uh -huh. Moved with fear. Moved with fear. Prepared an heart to the Savior of his Prepared an heart to the Savior of the Lord. By the which he condemned the world and became heir of the righteousness which is by faith. Thank you, man. That's just the message. He condemned the world. He did what? He condemned the word. Until you condemn the word and anything that is in the word, it is only then you can fellowship with God. If you still see anything that is good in this world, it will be very, very, very hard for you. Hallelujah. If you're thinking of tomorrow, you get another three, three duplex, tomorrow you get another car, and next tomorrow you change your car, you change your wristwatch, then you are not definitely bonded. Not until you condemn everything that is in this world, you are contented with whatever the Lord has given unto you. You stay put on that that you have. You make your mind at rest and serve that God. It is only then you can fellowship with God. The book of Malachi for, uh, chapter 2, verse 5 to 7. Malachi chapter 2, verse 5 to 7. Mm hmm He said his covenant is with them. Of life and peace. Of life and peace. And I gave them to and I gave them to him for the fear wherein he feared me. L listen to what he said. And he did what and I did what? And I gave them for him. I gave those things for them because for, of what? For the fear where because me. of the fear that they fear me. God will not give you anything 
positive, anything you could enjoy if you refuse to fear God. Uh -huh. I was afraid before my name. And they were afraid before my name. They trembling at the calling of my name. They fear when they call my name. When, when I, <laughs> I'm sorry, because I mean, when, when, when someone calling the name Jehovah and he will be trembling, that he will be trembling as if that Jehovah is by his side. And most of you, most of us, you even hear that Jehovah, if in your house, you start doing another thing as if that name is the name of your son or of your grandchild without fear. You see, they reference my name and they fear me. They fear me. Uh -huh. The law of truth was in his mouth. Since the law of what? Truth. Truth is in his mouth. You have to be truthful. You have to be what? You have to be truthful in everything you are doing. Hallelujah. I'm sorry, don't, I mean, don't just be annoyed with me if I'm reverence father. I, there was a day I was talking with daddy and uh, I, we won the phone and uh, jokingly, he was joking with me and jokingly, I was lying. Yes, 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 jokingly, I was lying and he knows I was lying. And jokingly, he also answered me. He said, yes, Alagwade, you are not in the altar and you are not in the sultana. Oh. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I don't know if that is sent into your head, that message. I just say, okay, daddy, I'm out of the house. I press red immediately because he has immediately jokingly sent me home that it is not until you are in the altar, no, when you are putting on Sutana, that you must say the truth. Anywhere you are, whatever that is coming up from your mouth should be that truth. Said Allah, but yes, I can hear that. You are not in Sutana and you are not in church. You are not in the altar. Ah, I just pressed it immediately. <laughs> and iniquity was not found in his lips. And iniquities was not found in them. There was no iniquity in them. They are ready to fellowship with God. Before you can walk with God, there must not be any iniquity in you. You have to strive. You have to strive. You have to strive. There is no little sin. That is no sin that is little. Any single disobedience is a complete disobedience. Uh -huh. He walked with me in peace and equity. He says he walked with me in peace and equity. Those are the person that God can walk with. With those, without those quality, you cannot walk together with God. Can two walk together unless they agree? If God is righteous and you are unrighteous, can you fellowship with him? If you are being truthful and your partner is not being truthful, can there be peace in that home? If you are in business with somebody and you put on all your, all your loyalty into that business and you can see that that guy is siphoning the phone there, will you be happy with that person? Hallelujah. Can two work together unless they agree? The way you could fellowship with God is a complete obedience. Complete what? Complete obedience. Let us see Deuteronomy chapter 26, verse 16. Complete obedience is the only answer that can give, that you can have to fellowship with God. Deuteronomy chapter 26, verse 16. Uh -huh. This is the day that Lord has commanded you. Uh -huh. Verse 16. 2, 6, verse 16. <laughs> This day the Lord thy God uh -huh. has commanded thee that, uh -huh. to do these statutes and command and judgments. And judgments. Thou shalt therefore keep and do them with all thy heart. Thou shalt keep them with what? All thy heart. With what? Your heart. And with thy soul. what? Like we are sleeping. Okay, go. <laughs> Thou hast avouched the Lord this day to be thy God. Yes. And to walk in his ways. To walk in in his ways and to keep his statue and to keep his statue his so way. when you are lying you are not walking his way when you are backbiting you are not doing what you are not walking in god's ways when you hate others you are not walking in his ways when the love of god is not in you you are not doing what you are not walking in his ways uh -huh. And his commandments. And in his commandments. And his judgments. And in his judgments. And to hearken unto his voice. And you promise to hearken unto his word. The day you are called into celestia, they baptize you 
we say I think him six or eight. Jesus is calling you. Jesus will open your tomato. Yes, unless you are a rebel, won't power my bo. That day you confess that you will worship him with all your heart. That day when the jingle bear your head, you'll be lacking on that ground as if to say you want to break that ground and go into it. But now you can you can you know how to assess it now. Yes, if you could go to church by ten, we could leave twelve o'clock and go to work. I could even join them by twelve and we finish the service together. Hallelujah. You are now separating the hours with God. You now know that you can go to God anytime you want to go to God because of his love. Go ahead, ma. And the Lord had avouched thee this day. The Lord has about you this day. To be his peculiar people. To be what? His to be his people. peculiar people. You are his peculiar people. We are his peculiar people. What you enjoy today, it is not what others are enjoying, especially when you are the celestial. The grace that is abound in this church is not in other denominations. So when things happen in other denominations, I just put my head and say, well, that is their own cup of tea. I know the God I am serving. Uh -huh. As he had promised thee, that thou should keep all his commandments. Then let's see Deuteronomy chapter 32, verse 46 to 47. Uh -huh. When you fellowship with Christ, it has to be a continuous exercise. No, no, uh -huh. Set your heart unto all the words. Do what, ma? Set your heart uh -huh. unto all the words uh -huh. which I testify among you this day, uh -huh. which ye shall command your mm. children mm -hmm. to observe to do yes. all the words of this law. For it is not a vain thing for you, mm -hmm. because it is your life. Yes. And through this thing, mm -hmm. ye shall prolong your days in the land, whither mm -hmm. ye go over Jordan to possess it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. says, if you obey and you are unto these words, it will prolong your lives on the land you are possessing. There will be a longevity in your life to your children, to your great-grandchildren, only if you fellowship with him. And when you're talking of fellowship with Christ, it's on a daily basis. When you wake in the morning, you must make sure you pray. When you are walking, you pray. When you're at your working place, you pray. When you go into the bathroom, you pray. When you are driving, you pray. On every second. And when they are the time for you, you open your Bible and you read your Bible. You continue fellowship with him gradually, gradually, as a baby trying to walk practicing, wanted to do this, wanted to do this. That is how you can fellowship with God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It is not be, it shouldn't be a Sunday, Sunday mercy. Majority of us, after today, that we open the Bible on the next Sunday again, then we'll be looking where that Bible is being kept. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. No. Hallelujah. You can not do that with God. No. In the morning, in the afternoon, either you like it or not, you need to fellowship with Him. By the time you are communing with God in 24 7 within your heart, it will be so very difficult for any evil thought to come into you. That act will be purely purified by the fire of Holy Ghost. And when fire of Holy, Holy, of Holy Ghost dwells in your heart, there will be no way an evil thought can even come near unto you. Hallelujah. Yes, and I do hand. It's devil's words. But when that heart is filled of Holy Spirit, how dare can devil now come into you to now lure you into his kingdom? It's impossible. It's impossible. But when that place is empty, he now sees that it's empty. Then he have an opportunity to do what? To come in there and do it there. Hallelujah. The Lord will help us Amen. to be holy as our Father is in holy. As Jesus Christ said in Matthew chapter 5, verse 48, He said, You be perfect as your Father in heaven is being perfect. You have to be perfect. Don't say, I have to be in you. No. No. You have to continue day in, day out to try to strive hard and try to be perfect. The Lord will help us. Amen. Let me take us into this second lesson through the. Uh, 
the book of First Peter, chapter 3, verse 15 to 16. Book of First Peter, chapter 3, verse 15 to 16. And Uh -huh. in your heart. Sanctify the Lord your God in your heart. And be ready always to give an answer to every man. Who? Oh. And, and be God. ready always to give an answer to the man. That asketh you a reason. That asketh you of. A reason of the hope that is in you. Uh -huh. With meekness and fear. That's okay, man. The book of Philemon, which is the only chapter. Philemon was a rich merchant in the Colossia in the olden days. But he loves the works of God. He uses his house for churches. And when he sees people of God, he wants to liaise with them. He wants to, I mean, accommodate them and do them good. But he has this one of his slaves, this uh, on, uh, Omenos, that was with him, who Philemon all in a high esteem. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And gave to him an high post. He, like, like he, he, he left everything in that his hand unto to him that you could take care of this. But uh, they are going on the line. Devil comes into the guy and he started doing rubbish. Then the boy saw that he's doing the rubbish. He didn't send him away. He didn't sack him. All he do was to make him redundant. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. All he did was hot, just make him redundant. You can just be there. He will not send him work. What used to come to his area doesn't come there any longer. What he used to do before, he doesn't do that any longer. So he could not control that steps as he used to do again. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And within himself, now see, ah, well, if that will be happening, then it's not for me to be here any longer. Then the best thing, let me go ahead and do the worst that this man will know, yes, I am there. And he went now to steal a large sum of money from Philemon. That slave Onemos went to go and steal a large sum of money and he ran away. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. When he ran away, he now met Paul in prison. With Paul in prison, with chain in his hand and in his leg, still used that position to talk to animals and bring Christ into his life. Hallelujah. 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 I don't think you are getting that message. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A lot of us, we just have a slight headache and somebody will come to us and tell us, ah, can you believe that uh, since, uh, two days ago, we will not be able to find something to eat in the house. And you, for you, you have what to eat for the next four days. In the morning, you have taken your breakfast and you are good. Just because of a slight headache. Maybe you've not taken your medication for that day, or maybe, maybe something, just slightly. The nurse says, Ah, oh God. Oh God. <laughs> you will now take that, your own, even your, that thing that is not even your, that is thing that is not even problem. You will now enlarge and make it great. And that person will now be thinking within himself, hey, don't you teach me by it. I not make a, a wrong movement. Why, why, am, why am I here now to talk to this person? I would even stay at home with this my problem. Hallelujah. But Paul in the prison, being chained in the prison, still have that time to talk to animals and let him know that what you do is not right. You don't do that. You need to have Christ in your life. This is the way you should have done it. This is the way you should have done it. And he was able to comfort him from that bad attitude and make him to be a Christian worthy soldier. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 2022 February. Okay, 2021. How many persons can you see from me, by me, he was able to become a celestial? How many person can you just point to that? Oh, in year 2021, oh, that person through me, I'll be able to put smile on their faces as you are sitting there. Just think twice. 
even of your relative, even of outsiders that has come unto you for help, how many have you been able to show their, them that this is Christian life, this is the way Christians should do it? A lot of us doesn't work and see here in America, government continue paying you. You continue taking it. And you have them over there. They cannot hit. But Paul in his situation still think he has to do that job of God. Let's see what's happened in that Philemon. Let's go from verse 11 and see how Paul presents Onemos back to Philemon. Which in time past which in time past was to thee unprofitable. Was to thee unprofitable. He was a thief, a arm robber. It was not useful for you in that time. Uh -huh. But now profitable to thee and but to me. But now it's not profitable to himself and to me. Whom I have sent again. Whom I have sent again. Thou therefore receive him. Therefore receive him. That is mine own bowels. Uh -huh. Whom I would have retained with me. Whom I have, would have retained. Because Paul now see the quality of Christian in life of uh, Onemios. That I would have even retained him because of the goodness. But I have to send him back to you. Uh -huh. That in thy stead he might have ministered unto me uh -huh. in the bonds of the gospel. Yeah. But without thy, without thy mind uh -huh. would I do nothing. Mm -hmm. That thy benefit should not be as it were yes. of necessity, uh -huh. but willingly. But willingly, willingly. Uh -huh. For perhaps he therefore departed for a season, uh -huh. that thou shouldest receive him forever. No. Oh. Not now as a servant, but above a servant. Not now as a servant. I'm sending you back to you now. But this time around, he's no more a servant. Uh -huh. But above a servant, a brother beloved. But a brother beloved. Especially to me. Especially to me. But how much more unto thee, both in the flesh and in the Lord. Thank you. That's the message of Philemon. That we of formerly we are sinners. Hallelujah. That we all are what? Yeah. And we are still sinners. We still sin. And we still receive forgiveness from God. We all know we are dungeon. We have been taken out by his grace. But God in his infinite mercy has made it possible for you and I to be a benefactor of that great grace. That is not common. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So the book of Philemon and the book of Amos chapter 3 is now telling me and you that we need to do our jobs as a Christian and we need to walk our ways as a Christian in the presence of Almighty God. In every circumstances, in every situation of our life, they must see Christ in you. Hallelujah. Amen. Not until when you put on Sutana. Not until when you are in the church. At your place of work, they must see Christ in you. When you are driving your vehicle on the road, they must see Christ in you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. When my son is taking me out in Nigeria, I will tell you, Daddy, you have to go to Lagos. That when you want to drive in Lagos, he, he does not want it, you fasting. That if you fast, you better stay at home. Because you won't know where you say, <laughs> Hallelujah. He said, they will push you to do, they will push you to do what you don't want to do. Hallelujah. Yes, now they will do that. If, by the time you are finding the car, the marua will jump into you. Before you know, you see the Okada running into you. Before you want to talk, you will see a pedestrian pull your mirror. And by the time you now talk blasphemy without your fasting, it's over. So he said, Daddy, when you are fasting, it's better one stay at home or you don't drive in this Lagos. If when you are not driving, they carry you in that vehicle, you will have said, Kilo shall we read? <laughs> Sincerely speaking, I am telling you nothing but the truth. Sincerely speaking, they will annoy you to that stage. But as a Christian, as a Christian, you just have to have that shock absorber that is strong, that even if you've been offended, even if they do anything wrong with you, what you need to say is just, the Lord will help you. Hallelujah. Not until you get to that situation, you cannot fellowship with God. When they offend you, they do that thing that is so worst, that is so worst, and you feel it in you, that pain. And then like, you feel like slapping them, you feel like glitching them. And you just look at that and say, the Lord help you. 
a friend of mine play of a blessed memory we were we enter uh, 835 from a cartoon we were going to a celeste place and we were sitting there and somebody just marked him on the leg and the person didn't say anything and the person just go to the back seat and sit down and my friend at a double level everybody he just say oh thank you ah. oh just look at you and that is it thank you Hey, I'm sorry, sir. I'm sorry, sir. I'm sorry, sir. What she will just say, I'm sorry. And the lady couldn't get herself until she alighted from that bus. She was within herself. She has she now get that guilt in himself. Ah, that he could not she could not control it. Every hey, daddy might be no. Every second, please daddy might be no. Say so, now and I look at my dog. Ah, I'll try you. <laughs> no, to me I will have ever. Uh, <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> yes, he knows me. And I, and I say, Oh, I'm trying. I think I'll get to this stage one, one, one day. Because as she matched me and she couldn't say anything the next thing. But my friend said, Thank you. Oh, and the lady couldn't help herself. She almost crying for one hour. Until you get to that level, you cannot fellowship with God. Because there's no way you will go and, they, and people will not offend you. There's no way you could do it. That person that is very close to you will do that thing that is very bad to you. Unless you are able to say, okay, it's okay. I know, I know what the Lord will help you. And that person within himself or herself will be, feed, will be feeling that. So, I, does it understand what I've done to her? Does it understand what I've done to him? Ah, oh, it's like she doesn't know. You know the gravity. All you need is that you just leave him unto God. Hallelujah. Until you are able to do that, you cannot fellowship with God. So the message to the father, friends, friends, sisters, as a Christian, you have to carry cross, that Christ cross, as Christ did it. Complete humanity, to complete love to all humanity. No backbiting, no hatred. Don't let anything that anybody is doing to you. Don't let it even. Don't, don't let it. Don't even see it as anything. Don't just see it as anything. Tomorrow morning, call that person if possible. Ah, good morning. Are you? How are you doing? It was your night. Hope everything is okay. You doing good? Then the person will be answering himself. On that, he say, it's like hey, there's something somewhere. Like he's sick of here. He's not sick of here, but only because you have taken it out of your mind so that you can be able to move forward. The Lord will help us yeah. and uphold us. Yeah. His spirit will continue to abide in us.